Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Won Young Sun Min. Howdy, friends. So tonight I'm going to talk about fear and fire. Happy New Year. So I was recently read uh, a real good article in um, one of the recent uh, issues of, of uh, Mindfulness Bell. It was uh, written by uh, Jane Ellen uh, Kumbelik. <clears throat> and she was uh, summarized and then riffed off of one of the Buddha's uh, Jataka tales. Uh, those tales about uh, past lives that he had had and so forth. And um, so there's one where it's about this parrot um, and living in this forest and a forest fire breaks out. And there's some of the animals are, are getting trapped by the fire and they're going to get killed. And so this parrot, it's like, well, I got to do something. So it swim, flies off to the river, scoops up some of the water with its little beak and goes and puts those few little drops of water onto the, the fire. And then keeps going back and forth, exhausting itself, getting singed by the fire. And there's a whole bunch of, of gods sitting up in one of the heavens looking down this and just laughing at this, the ridiculousness of this bird uh, trying to uh, trying to put out this uh, fire with little bits of water uh, from its uh, that's carrying its beak, but one of the gods is real sympathetic um, and uh, go, goes down to talk to the parrot and says, "Hey, listen, buddy. I mean, this is just so awesome what you're trying to do. Um, I'm totally inspired by you, but you're just going to get yourself killed. You just can't help these other animals. You should just save yourself and take off." And the parrot says, says, listen, buddy, I don't need any advice from you. What I need is your help. And the god was so moved by this that he uh, he just started bawling and the tears came down and doused all the flames and uh, saved the critters. Um, and so, of course, I'm sure y'all, as soon as I start talking about fire in a Buddhist context, you're all immediately thinking, okay, we're talking about craving. Because, of course, you know, Siddhartha, use the image of fire or uh, craving since, uh, you know, that's surely one of the earliest teachings or images that he that he offered people. Um, and here, this idea of, of helping to extinguish all the flames, you know, this idea, an, an image of helping others to extinguish their craving, in other words, nirvana, right? Um, but, of course, today, we got with um you know driven by climate change i mean we've got like the world like literally on fire right um i mean things you know got a bunch of rain and snow this last year out west in the u.s so it's not so bad now but you know the, the west has just been terrible um australia um greece like um syria and israel had uh this last year had uh, a bunch of terrible forest fires and so, of course, the thing, what can I do with my my little beak picking up these tiny, uh, tiny little bit of, of water? But of course, there's eight billion of us. That's a lot of beaks. That's a lot of water. Really, we've got plenty of um, of, of water collectively to extinguish the um, the, the the cravings that um, that contribute to to climate change. <clears throat> uh, but uh, one of Kambelik's main points in that article was to actually was getting us to look at and engage the fears that we experience. And, um, you know, and, and from that prompting us to see what we can do with our own little beak, picking up our own tiny little bits of water. Well, I, I re for years now, I've read two newspapers every morning. I want to, because I want to be an informed, engaged citizen. I want to learn about my community, my, um, you know, my, my country, my world. But it, this also gives me plenty of opportunity to learn about myself, uh, because I, over the years, have experienced a lot of anger while reading the newspaper. Um, and so, of course, as a, any good Buddhist would do, you know, oh, where, where's this anger coming from? And I mean, it didn't require any great insight. It was pretty clear that it coming from uh, a lot of it coming from from fear, uh, fear in terms of like actual physical safety of myself and and my family. You know, finding that my uh, our actual physical safety is 
believing or at least perceiving it to be really so much grounded in um in our uh democracy and and the rule of law and so when i read in the newspaper about people seemingly doing things threatening those things threatening democracy and the rule of law um i uh, see i can see those as threats to myself like actual physical literal uh physical threats because this, this fear that as you know, things like democracy and the rule of law break down become subject to arbitrary authority or or I should say like a much more arbitrary authority than you know what already exists and in that the potentials for violence are are uh, are terrible so i this fear comes up and then i turn it into um into anger at those people who i read about in the newspaper who i uh perceive as the the source of those those threats well reading about uh uh, fear in a political context uh, recently, and there's a psychologist who was talking about and talking about one of a, a common uh, fear reaction that people have is that then when you get uh, serious the fear is to want to retreat into a group of folks who you perceive as being uh, like yourself. And so, man, it just doesn't seem like there is just a cycle of fear in in America and lots of places. Uh, in the world where you know you have a group of folks uh driven by by fear cultivated by demagogues i mean you know of course fear is the currency of demagogues right and so as people get all all afraid and then start reacting and retreating into them themselves into groups of folks like them and doing things that would seem um hostile to um hostile to democracy and then other folks get afraid of them um, like, you know, like me, and then retreat into themselves. And I've heard so many times um, over the last uh, like five, six years, people saying like, oh, I am so done with those other folks. Like I, even, you know, even folks in their family, like I don't, I'm not even going to talk to folks like that anymore. There's that fear reaction, that retreating into, into folks like oneself. Um, and so then when, you know, the other side starts doing that, then the first group perceives the other folks as even more threatening than they already had um and so and then it, it just keeps going back and forth and the cycle of fear increasing factionalism and, and polarization all of which continually um intensifies the possibilities of violence and of course in the u.s and elsewhere around the world we've seen uh, political violence uh resulting from you know coming out of this the cycle so again what can i do with as this parrot with a tiny little beak here in a in a country in a in a world on fire well it's also like what can i like not do which is to uh retreat into that sameness to cutting myself off from um from other folks to i cannot direct my anger and fear towards uh towards individuals i mean at the very least i can break my uh, my role in that um, that cycle of fear. Um, another thing I've been reading lately is some of Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, speeches and essays on uh, nonviolent resistance. And one of the things he talks about in there is not just like, you know, the outward sort of actions, you know, outward nonviolent action, but he also talked about nonviolence of the, you know, the spirit, sort of the attitude that one takes. And in the context of nonviolent resistance and civil rights movement, Talking about the importance over and over again, say, you know, listen, you, you can't see this as a conflict between black and white people. You got to see this as a conflict between justice and injustice, because the goal is not to, you know, beat the other side, but is, you know, quote, redemption and reconciliation, uh, quote, the creation of a beloved community. That in the end, what comes out of all their nonviolent struggle is, you know, looking for a community, but that drawing that drawing everybody together into a single uh, beloved uh, community. And here are folks to see that the one supposed opponents is also victims of that same system that they were um, uh, victims of, to therefore not to seek to humiliate or, um, or seek revenge on those other, other folks, but instead to, um, 
gain uh, friendship and understanding of them and, and with them to cultivate them as as allies in in seeking justice. So in the context that I've been talking about here for myself, it means that that security, that safety, those those universal needs, um, uh, achieving those for all people, not just for you know my supposed uh, team. That and then you think about that that you get that fear reaction, that retreating into um, into sameness. I mean, that is an othering, right? It's pulling up this boundary. There's uh, self and other. There's my group and, and their group. And this is an example of what King referred to as a violence of the spirit. Real early on, we started um, studying with uh, with the teacher Andre. He uh, and some of you might. Um, I remember this as well. We often talk about how as his role as a as a teacher, a Zen teacher, was not to give students anything, but to take it all away. And so here, and what do I got to give up? You know, give up my anger, my fear, give up enemies. What do I? And then instead, take up uh, meta, loving kindness, loving friendliness, whatever you want to call it. And so, in doing that with just my little beak. Um, picking up those drops of water and dousing the flames of my own cravings and, and fears, breaking my part in that um, in that cycle of fear, you know. And in the end, I mean that that sort of that nonviolence of the spirit, I think, is the thing that's going to be more likely to produce or be more effective in um, uh, in producing the security and, and safety that the universal needs that we all have. Much more so than um, than fear and and uh, the politics of domination. Um, even if you know, quote, my side achieves victory, and I mean that just it just means more violence. Because if you achieve that victory through the domination of others, then it's like, well, you've always got to keep the other folks down, um, which means constantly generating resistance, continually. Um, creating uh, more violence. So instead, in love, in nonviolence of the, sp the spirit, that I think much more likely, or everyone is more likely to find the sort of safety that we all need. Um, you know, but of course, there's no God who's going to come down and cry and douse all those flames for us. Uh, there's just us, eight million beaks, and a whole lot of work to do. <laughs>